Aloha and welcome. This is Stephen Chong of the Tokyo Aquascaping Union and Steve Scapes on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. This is my channel. Welcome to my channel. Hopefully, it's something that is maintainable.、Um, those of you who know me know that I am a competitive aquascaper who participates in the IAPLC. That's the biggest planted aquarium contest in the world. And this year, I competed in the Taiwanese and Chinese based ISTA and CIPS contests as well. Now, those are my main hobbies and take a lot of my time. But I thought that you know, restarting this YouTube channel might be a way for me to give back and engage in a wider audience of more beginner and other hobbyists who I don't really have too much opportunity to.、Uh, You know, engage with and perhaps give them an insight into how competitive layouters you know, approach the hobby and think about the space within this glass box. Now,、um, people who are serious about the contests really aren't,、um, you know, they're not visible on YouTube. And it is because we tend to put all of our time and energy outside of work and family, et cetera, into the hobby of planted aquarium design. So, With that in mind,、um, this is about as high scale as this channel is going to become.、Um, I'm going to see if this is a format that is doable while also maintaining you know, my focus on layouting for competition as well as my regular work and family life balance. So, what I want to do with this channel is talk about my layouts, talk about other people's layouts, and especially help beginners. Um, get into like, thinking about design and thinking about the aesthetics of the aquarium and you know, what is possible within the dimensions of the glass box. So, with that in mind, whether you're a vet in or especially if you're more of a newbie, please leave me a comment with a link to your layouts if you would like me to make a video like this talking about your work in the future, giving you whatever help and advice I can. So, on to this layout、um, Butterfly Hideaway, ranked. Fifth in the world in last year's IPLC 2018.、Um, I'm going to be making two videos. This first one is going to be about story and also a kind of self introduction in restarting this channel. The other video will be purely about the graphics and the design of the layout so we can get into some technical stuff. So, with that,、um, let me get into the talk about the layout. It was a tremendous honor to join the top seven, receiving fifth. Um, at the time, there had been no Americans either who had ever entered into the top seven of the IPLC, and me and my buddy Hip. Also, the two of us also are participating in the TAC,、um, the Aquascapers Collective group, so check them out as well. Tip was fourth, I was ranked fifth. It was the first time Americans had ever entered, and it was like a huge deal. So let's get into the backstory of the layout. Um, as I mentioned, I am an American. I wanted to,、um, I actually am from Hawaii. This is a picture of me and my buddy Jojo, who is the manager at Aquascapes,、uh, the ADA vendor in Hawaii. Go check him out if you're there.、Uh, but I grew up in Hawaii and I'm half Japanese, half Chinese American. It's a very typical background in Hawaii. And I really got into the hobby because I've always loved nature, I've always loved art. Uh, in my youth, I was a disciple of a painter named Hiroshi Tagami, who's a really you know, fantastic nature and landscape painter from Hawaii. Please go check out his work if you have a chance. Again, Hiroshi Tagami. So I grew up and I got into aquariums.、Um, I discovered some at Kahala Mall that the, my first planted aquarium just blew me away. After that, I had to get into it, found Amano, Amano Takashi's books, and that was the rest of the story. Um, but several years later, like 10, 12 years later, it was in 2014 that you know, I moved to Japan and started living in Tokyo. And shortly after that, I met the man here, Masashi Ono, the world's Masashi Ono, veteran participant of the contest from you know, contest number one, never missing a year up until now, and you know, joined his group, the, to-、uh, the Tokyo Aquascaping Union. Really, it was Ono Masashi and Fukada Takayuki, you know, Fukada san, the world's Fukada san, two time world champion 2015 and 2016. They were my two mentors and taught me a lot, as well as all the other men- members of the Tokyo Aquascaping Union. From Shito san, who, you know, gave me my basic training 
to Narase-san, Watanabe-san, and Takahashi-san, who are all fantastic rivals and teammates. You know, um, I grew up in this environment. It was a really great opportunity, a real privilege to be around, you know, the best teachers and friends that you can have in the hobby. <laughs> I'm really glad that after I met Amano-san's work, I started studying Japanese. And, you know, studying Japanese and being continuously inspired by Amano-san is what, you know, let me evolve my ability in that language and eventually find myself living in Tokyo and having the opportunity to join this group. So before we get into the butterfly hideaway, I think we have to start out with my, my layout from the year before that, which is the one you see here. Um, it was called uh, Flame Crystallis, Flame River Crystallis. I was trying to recreate you know, the image of um, the Costa Rican River uh, Cano Crystallis. And, you know, the really incredible red plants that happen there every summer. Unfortunately, this layout did not so, do so well. I ranked 525 that year, and it was really depressing because this was my first really serious attempt at going into the IEPLC. I had poured all my time and energy investment into making this layout work. It was a crushing defeat for, you know, my first time as a Tokyo Aquascaping Union member to participate in the contest seriously. Um, but despite being in that devastated place, you know, after convincing my wife and my family that this was something that I had to pursue and had to do, and putting in all the time and money and effort into, you know, improving my skills as an aquascaper, there was no giving up here. There was only going forward. So going in 2000, going into the 2018 layout preparation, um, I had a lot of ideas. But one thing that really intrigued me were the, you know, the drop away areas in Mexico um, called cenote, right, where rock has fallen into a giant cavern and um, nature kind of creeps into it from above. Now, most of the photos that you'll see of the cenote are from below looking up. Really incredible photos, but that's really what people always imagine when they think about these type of sinkholes. But what intrigued me was this photo that I found online here, where the bottom is cut away, and you're looking at it from the side. I got the idea that you know, it'd be actually more interesting to look into a hole from the top and create the illusion of an aquarium that doesn't have a bottom that drops away down forever um, into a black hole. And that was something that I was pursuing. I had a lot of different ideas about how if you hid away the foreground, then you could make this illusion of a never ending bottom into the aquarium. And it was what I was going for. But I had a snag because no matter how many different versions of this I drew and thought about and considered, um, all of my illustrations, all of my drawings like this, didn't really give me the feeling that I wanted. Uh, for one, you have an issue with these drawings that, like, are you going to be bringing the audience to the top or to the bottom? A typical vanishing point or like getting them to look down into the hole? And the whole interesting thing about this type of layout is the fact that it's bottomless. But if you only drag people's time and attention into the hole, then you're left with this kind of gloomy, anxious feeling that's the end experience that you give to your audience. It's depressing or it's scary. And that's not really what a nature aquarium should be about. Um, it's just what we are as people. You know, we don't like dark, spooky places. Um, and so I had to, you know, figuring, unlocking the issues with this concept was a real problem. And so I, at one point I even gave up on it. Another key point in the development process for me was when I went to um, Akita and I went to um, Oirase with the TAU and CAU teams. If you don't know them, the CAU, Creative Aquascaping Union, are the guys from Hong Kong. You see Dave Chow here and the other members from Hong Kong. Really awesome layouters. They, the CAU are really the guys who um, put the team uh, competitive team mentality on the map. They're the one who kicked off the entire contest you know, kick-ass aquascapers from the early generations, even up until now, so much skill to be found in the Hong Kong group. And 
They're part of the inspiration for what created the Tokyo Aquascaping Union later, Ono-san and Fukara-san's group. And, you know, we're really tight, very close, and this opportunity to go on a trip with these members to see the Oirase um, area was like a huge opportunity. Um, for people who don't know, sorry, one second. I'm having some technical difficulties here. So for people who don't know, um, Oirase is a river up in the northern part of Japan. It is a very special place. Because of the heavy snow, there's lots of twisty trees and fast flowing beautiful water. So much moss and so much greenery. It's a special place that even Amano-san went often to take uh, photos of nature and get inspiration. Like It's a kingdom of wabi-sabi as many people who are familiar with the place including Amano-san like to call it. So. <laughs> Here's another picture of everyone from the two teams pretending to hold up Whisker Rock in Akita as if it were a giant Wabi Kusa. This, op this trip was a special, you know, it was a really special opportunity to get in touch with nature and I did find inspiration on this trip as well. Like one of the greatest places was uh, a place called Mototaki or in Japanese origin fall. Translating from Japanese, Origin Falls. This is a picture of uh, Mototaki, and you can see Fukara-san and Ono-san also gazing up at this intense nature. So, like, this huge rock and nature draping down all around it was something that really inspired me. And during the trip, I started doing other pictures because I wasn't really satisfied with the Senote concept, the whole concept. And so I started doing things like this. This is one of the sketches I made um, on the trip. And you can actually see here there are notes, three, seven, and this black. <laughs> this is Fukara-san drawing on my drawing um, to say, ah, ah, Stephen, you know, like, the proportions are wrong. So this black area was um, unnecessary. And he moved, shifted the center to here and said, this is the divide, right? Bring your viewpoint here. And he helped fix my spacing and framing. Um, this was a drawing that I did when I came back off of that initial sketch. And um, you know, I really was trying to you know, capture the essence of Japanese forests and the type of energy that I got on the trip in Akita. I actually, instead of using one of the northern Japanese ideas, I took um, inspiration from another waterfall in Japan called Shirayukitaki, or the white thread uh, White Thread Falls in Nagano, and that's this area in the back here. But when I showed this picture to Ono-san, he said, eh, futsu. it's so normal. It's too flat and normal and frankly boring. So I had an issue here. I had the Senote drawings were, you know, really dramatic and powerful, but they were really anxious and, you know, anxiety ridden and gloomy. They were angsty, not, you know, uplifting. On the other hand, I had this Japanese forest concept, which was very harmonious and peaceful and beautiful, but was flat and boring. So neither of these concepts was really working out until I saw this. Um, I started looking at some ocean photos for fun and, you know, seeing these kind of outcrops um, of coral reefs and hanging corals. This really got my brain jogging. And what I felt like it did was it got me out of the space of thinking like a person and helped me think a little bit like a fish. And the drawings that came after that, well, I th think I really hit a threshold. You know, I hit a peak when I did this drawing. Um, ah, yeah, when I got here, I thought, this, I got it, I nailed it, I figured out the formula. So, Kind of like in the earlier ocean photos, you see you're framed by an outcrop. You're like a fish looking out from underneath the ledge. And you see the drop-off expanse. But out in the open area, there's this flat space. Kind of like my il illustration here. And what this did was I had that flat. So when you have flatness in a layout, it's something that's very peaceful and calming but there's no tension. 
um, I had this flat space, but it would be surrounded by the black drop off. Now, in a black drop off, you know, you have the sense that you can fall down. That's how people feel, right? So there's ten tension, anxiety, the things that I were talking about existing in the cenote concept. I'd, so putting them together, I'd have this flat white space and a drop off, filled, you know, framed by this mighty cavern. And fish, you know, they're floating. They don't care about gravity. They don't care about falling. But we as people think about, you know, being locked into space or falling down into a hole. And yet there would be this flat, peaceful area with almost like waterfall-like white roots draping down that would just, um, you know, draw the eye to it and help the viewer feel safe when they got there and bring a final harmonious and peaceful feeling at the end of the layout. <clears throat> um, taking this initial draft, I eventually developed it into this version. And I thought, okay, I've got it. When I got to this point, Fukada san was like, all right, Steven, stop drawing and get to work. Actually start building this thing. And that's when I busted out the rocks, busted out the wood, and started to get to work. Now, at this point, you know, I had been drawing and sketching for, I want to say, six or seven months. June, July, August. June, July. August, September, October, November, December, never mind. I'd been, yeah, it's like eight months. And finally, I got to this point at like the first week of January. And, you know, it's go time. It's like, let's, let's bust out the rocks. Let's start getting to work. So I had the empty aquarium and I started putting in my flat lava rocks that I use in most of my layouts. And I thought that the plate lava was a good fit. Um, I started putting everything together. You know, using a lot of the diorama creation skills that I had been putting to work the previous year. Uh, I'll show you guys the final hardscape. Now, everything that could go wrong did go wrong in putting this together. Like, all of these rocks fell down at least once or twice. This giant rock, the the mother stone, I, the father stone of the layout, actually fell down forward one time. Now, you guys probably can't tell. From the photo because often you know uh, you need to use something really big in order to get even a decent size in size of aquarium so you think about it, this is a 120 centimeter aquarium right which means that this rock here is like well it's several rocks connected together as you can see here but this whole construction here is like 40 or 50 centimeters long it's huge it's like you know you need help to I actually had my wife push up a little bit and bounce my waist as I lifted up and into the aquarium. So this is a giant rock here and it fell straight forward towards the glass. And when I came home and saw, I was like freaking out because I'm like, oh my God, this could have shattered the entire front face of the aquarium, but it didn't, it didn't. And somehow I managed to get to this point, even after I filled the tank, like, Half the rocks here fell down at some point. And it was funny because some of them I just said, ah, I'm not going to put it in. It's too much work. I can't get it to work out. And you went, oh, you know, some of those rocks are not needed. That's what I realized when I got to the final photo. Sometimes, you know, when you're doing it, you realize that in the process, there's things you don't need. Um, so for the final layout, you know, my uh, friend and mentor, Masashi Ono, came and uh, did the photograph. I've been hiring Ono-san to do my photo shoots uh, since, my, since the last one and up until now. And it's great because he's just such an expert. It's, um, you know, doing photo shoots with Ono-san, it is not only an opportunity to, um, well, it's not only the process for you know finishing the final photo to get it to the contest, but every time I bring Ono-san to help me with the photo shoot, I learn something new about chasing fish or setting up light or even doing final last ditch tweaks to the layout. Um, and you know, it's great to always have him. It's a real honor. And what we came up with was this. This was the final photo. Um, and Ono-san always takes the photos and I do the editing myself. Uh, because I have that illustration background, I'm pretty comfortable with Photoshop. I like to do my own editing. But this photo is everything that I wanted it to be. You know, you have this 
very slight swish of um, ripple up in the reflection that just ties everything together. And the fish, uh, as I wanted to, you have here Gertrude's butterfly, which is the blue rainbow fish fluttering about the middle. Um, I entitled the piece Butterfly Hideaway, and I chose the Gertrude's butterfly rainbow fish because I wanted to emphasize that sense of weightlessness. Um, this is a fish that doesn't really school. It flutters about the tank, and you know this is an enclosed space. There's no stream. There's no current. I wanted a fish that would like float in this space, and I think that they really did it justice, especially swimming around the area right where you know I wanted to draw the eye. I had brought everything to in my efforts. Now you'll see one thing that changed dramatically um, from the hardscape. Initial hardscape was this foreground, and this will this foreground will always, always for eternity, be um, a point of debate amongst competitive layouters who are around me. You know, Josh Sim will tell you. You know, the Malaysia, Malaysian two-time um, master Josh Sim will tell you that he much prefers the original uh, because, and you know, the argument for the original was that this foreground helps create the illusion of the hole that I was going for much more strongly. It kind of got lost a little bit um, in the final. But the reason why you know, I went ahead and did this. I, at the time, guys, you got to remember, I was coming off of rank 525, so I was still lacking a whole lot of confidence in myself. And um, getting a lot of private one-on-one -on -one instruction from Shito-san, who told me that, uh, from both Ono-san and Shito-san, I was getting a lot of critique on the foreground, and rightly so, because when you do a foreground, you want to have some detailed work. You want each bit to be like a layout in and of itself. Because, you know, detailed scale of the foreground is what, you know, an epic scale of the mid and background to really expand and go for it, right? So because of the, change the changes that we made in the foreground here, this rock and the whole space feels much bigger than in the initial hardscape. Um, inversely, though, the problem is that the drop-off got a lot weaker. And so I'll we'll never know what was what was best for sure. But what I do know for sure is I wouldn't do anything differently because I ranked fifth in the world with this layout. And um, you know, having that kind of debate, having that kind of uncertainty is also what helps you grow and expand and think for yourself. And I think you know, coming out of this layout, taking in so much input from uh Fukada san from Ono-san, from the other TAU guys, and from you know international friends like Josh, it made it made me think more about what is my own layout, what is my own style, what is my own approach to the aquarium, and it allowed me to become more independent from my layouts this year. And I'm really looking forward to showing you the different tanks that I put together in 2019 series. So when I got the initial letter, wait, let me. I don't know why preview is acting strangely, but when I got when I opened the letter and saw rank five, I was just like freaking out. It was absolutely amazing, um, just unbelievable. I couldn't believe it going from rank five hundred and twenty-five up to five, and knowing that I had been making history as one of the first Americans to enter into the top seven. Um, I had reached a goal that I had, you know, carried with me and cherished ever since I was in high school, like over a decade ago. Um, you know, to face seriously with the IAPLC and to join the upper ranks of the contest, and you know, put all of my work and all of my energy and all my passion into reaching the big stage, and here it was. <laughs> I did get kicks out of seeing that, you know, they, um, I did send ADA, my Chinese name, Zhang De Wei, um, in case like, so when the contest book comes out, you see your name written in both English letters and in um, kanji, um, if you're Japanese and, you know, Chinese characters, Chinese spelling, if you're um, from one of the Chinese countries. And so I did send my characters just so that, you know, people in China would be able to 
people in China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and other Chinese speaking countries would be able to see, you know, my full name in Chinese. But I didn't expect them to, you know, write the Chinese here. This year, um, they put in my English name. And I also submitted with Japanese characters for my Japanese name, which is like Fujiwara Toshio. Now, moving on, you know, so I also managed to win the most innovative award from the AGA contest. For those not familiar with the AGA contest, it is the Aquatic Gardening Association um, who runs an annual contest. It's cool because there's different categories for size and for things like biotope and Dutch and um, vivariums. And it's older than the IPLC. So there's not as many participants. So maybe it's not as elite as the IPLC. But there's history, and um, it's a great organization. Go check out their forums and their community as well. Uh, it was a terrific honor to receive the most innovative award from that contest because, you know, I felt like I had really gone out of my way to try and put together a unique and interesting innovative concept. And the fact that it was appreciated here in that way was a tremendous honor. So thank you for that again, AGA. Now moving on to the Nature Aquarium party itself, um, I'm going to have to figure out why Preview does this. But you, getting to finally stand on that big stage and um, wear a suit and receive the award um, for those top ranks was a moment I'll never forget. And all through this process, guys, the feeling that I felt most of all was gratitude because man, you just cannot do this without support from those around you. First of all, to my wife and my family for letting me do this and having my back and pushing me to be as good as I could be. And then, you know, my teachers, my companions, like both the guys in both TAU and TAC, um, the North American group, you know, um, all of the love and friendship that went into you know the feelings needed to pursue this was just incredible and then afterwards you know having me and hip uh, me and my rival my buddy hip uh, making history as ranked four and five from the united states that was that was incredible feeling too just imagine guys america in tw you know in 18 years of the contest never once getting into the top seven this is a very rare time that anyone from outside of asia reached there and here it was, and not just here, but there's two of us. America had four in the top uh, 100 last year. We've dropped down to two this year, unfortunately, but we're going to make a comeback. We're going to make a comeback. We, the TAC team is like really strong, and I think you know next year America is going to make its name for itself again. But it wasn't just an achievement for America. For TAU too, it was, this was a really special year because this was the first time that we broke the upper ceiling of entrance into the top 27. Up until 2018, the max we'd ever gotten was two. Usually, you know, TAU never had zero in the top 27. This is an elite group of serious aquascapers who want to win. Um, but, you know, it was always one. One or two. We'd, ne we'd never broken that. So this year... Fukata, in 2018, we had Fukata-san at rank 3, Stephen Chong at rank 5, and Takaishi-san at rank 11. My friend and rival in TAU Neo, the next generation. Um, the three of us entering into the top 27, honor ranks and above. History, guys. It was, it was fantastic. Like, really, I, so much love and support from this group. Thank you so much to Fukada-san and Ono-san, Watanabe-san, Narisa-san. I just want to say everyone's names. Um, Takahisi-san and Shito-san. And Fiona coming from Seattle. If you guys get an opportunity, go check her um, store out in Seattle. Um, she's, you know, working really hard to make her own way there in business. Great Wabi-Kusa classes. Um, so please go check her out. You can find her on Facebook as well. You know, it's, it's just an unforgettable memory, unforgettable moments. And here's my haul, my haul uh, from that year. So many grateful presents and awards 
course, the IPLC, and then the AGA Most Innovative Award Contest. I received this beautiful uh, photo from my friend Bernat. Um, he was ranked set, ranked sixth in the 2018. His Aquascape, based on Amano-san's garden, is absolutely epic. If you haven't seen it before, go check it out. And then this here is a Daruma from my friend uh, Nakamura-san. And um, so the thing with the Daruma is it's a Japanese tradition where you paint in one eye when you make a wish. And then when you achieve that wish, you paint in the other eye. So Nakamura-san had handed this out, at, handed out a bunch of these to different people in the year before, in 2017. Especially to me, because I was so crushed and devastated. He was like, good luck next year, Steven. I was like, thank you. I'll do my best. And I, I did my best. And I filled in that second eye with a lot of pride. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Pin, a pin badge of the American flag that hit Brang and the badge from that Nature Aquarium party. Unforgettable memories, guys. When you, you know, that's what we really love about hobbies. You know, community passion, pursuing like the things that you really care about. And when it comes together, when you see your vision through, you know, that's, you know, real happiness in a hobby. And I hope that it's something that all of you can achieve, no matter what your goals are for your aquariums. <laughs> uh, uh, I just want to share finally this one post I made at the end. Um, Ono-san, why did you capture this bizarre expression? I know this is part of the speech that I made at the party. Um, and my comments. I'm very grateful to my masters for not disowning me when I took 525 in the IPLC 2017. <laughs> Dreams do come true. Anything is possible. And you know, after I got there, got us, after I got to rank 5, Fukara-san told me, I don't know, Steven, the only other goal worth pursuing is rank 1. Which means that you gotta come after me, you come have to come after Josh, and you have to come after us like you're going to win. If you don't believe it, it'll never happen. And so this is where the real battle starts. Unfortunately, uh, that didn't work out so great this time. Um, but I mean, come on. Um, I'm really proud and honored to receive rank 15. Um, I'm very proud of my work, and I think that. My, I'm even more proud of my layout this year, and it reflects on the things that I learned from this layout. And I look forward to talking about those in a future video. So I'm planning to publish this video the week before the Nature Aquarium party in um, Niigata. So I will be there doing vlogging. I'll be interviewing Josh, who just won his second championship. I'll be interviewing my teacher, Fukara-san, who um, ranked two this year and a bunch of other layouters who made it into the top 100 and who are there um, To celebrate I'm gonna be asking them two questions Tell me a bit about your layout and tell me about the layout that inspired you the most The layout that was presented besides your own that interested you and inspired you the most and I'm gonna to put together that as a collage video something to look forward to now, a bit of housekeeping. This is kind of what this channel is going to look like. Um, as I said, this is a fight with time. You'll never see a lot of competitive aquascapers here on YouTube because we don't have time. We're really focused on you know, doing what we can to pursue this passion that I have and I hope to share with all of you. And I know that like, there's so many different hobbyists that approach this um, you know, aquascaping and this art and this passion for fish and life and nature from many different angles, but there aren't too many people who are able to share this angle on this hobby from this perspective. So fighting with time, I hope that this is something that I can maintain. And the way I'm going to maintain it is not by talking about my work, because those who know competitive aquascapers know that we have one tank or two tanks that we work on an entire year and we can never show it because the big show off is the actual presentation. No, if this channel continues to have content, it will be because of all of you. Um, I really want to help beginners and aquascapers of all different backgrounds who are you know, interested in doing more with what they have, pursuing more for themselves, you know, share. I will try to help you as much as I can by 
commenting and advising and you know playing a helper role in your work and through your through talking about your works you know share the passion with lots of others who are interested in learning about this perspective as well uh, so please look forward to that and check out the other video where I'll be talking more about the specific techniques involved in um, the concept for my uh, for this aquascape this was more of a story the other one will be more technical and um, leave comment as I mentioned leave comments in either place with URLs to your pictures of your aquascapes or posts that you've made on Facebook or in the forums about your work um, so let me see it and um, yeah I look forward to participating in the nature aquarium party the results for the Taiwan contest are also going to pre be presented this upcoming week definitely look forward to those I ranked 34 uh, <laughs> gotta do better next year but I mean that was the best that I could do and also we are desperately waiting at this moment for the results of the Chinese contest they're supposed to come out yesterday god I can't wait to see um, who ranked where it's going to be so much fun anyway so much coming up we are in the season of celebration for this hobby um, before we go into the season of hell which is creating and preparing our aquascapes for the 2020 contest 2020 will be the 20th anniversary of the IEPLC epic epic times to come so again uh, my name is Stephen Chong of the Tokyo Aquascaping Union and also the Aquascapers Collective from North America. Um, Steve Scapes on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Please follow me in all those places and like, subscribe, and especially comment with pictures of your aquariums. And thank you for watching. I'll see you later. Aloha.